Welcome to the city, Mastermind City. Hi, I'm Faye Chapel, And I'm Stacey Maynard. Join us for a vibrant, inspiring, and uplifting talk as we focus on how you can make a lasting impact on a global scale. Because the truth is, we're here because we want you to win. So are you ready to surround yourself with success because you're in the right place? Welcome to the city. Happy Wednesday. You are in the midst of still craziness, but we're at the yeah. home stretch of craziness. We're in the home stretch. So we, uh, as you guys know, I'm moving. So um, everything is finally done. They're coming to take pictures and video today. Um, it's been an interesting experience because I've sold lots of places and always done it on my own. And we're using, you know, one of my, uh, one of Gord's friends and there's been a stager here. And I mean, I already kind of staged my house, you know, what I mean? and um, but it's interesting because you have to like, OK, let it go. Let it go. Let them do what they want. Even if you don't like it, let them do what they want. <laughs> right. Well, stagers and, and like you had said before, stagers have their own. Um, I love them. Yeah, um, I think they're absolutely worth their weight in gold. Yeah, but they do have their own idea of the way things should look. Right. It's usually not and your idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then, so what, so, so an interesting um, question you pointed out was like the difference between one piece of artwork versus another right. piece of artwork. And would that prevent you or encourage you to buy the house? Yeah. And I, I, I say no, um, but I can see past everything. I mean, if there right. was a bunch of artwork on Satan and devil worshiping <laughs> on the walls, I probably would think twice about buying that house. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> But my stuff's really generic and right. you know they just they swap it out for different generic <laughs> right because the, the the couple pictures that i love are massive and big and you can't touch them it's like peter lick i have a beautiful stunning uh if anyone doesn't know peter lick look him up it's l-i-k he's this phenomenal photographer and the giant size art pieces that halogen light you know shines on like but you can't move that if you wanted to <laughs> It's massive. So, um, you know, but like, I'm not, to me, everything in a house is just things, right? right. It's just things. So I'm not married to anything. Um, I know people who've had stages that will not allow them to change certain things. And I said, I don't care, do anything you want, but I do live here. So I do have to have my internet hooked up, right? My son lives here. He goes to virtual school, right? So there are certain things that like, like it or not, they're staying. Right? Well, that's the thing. And and as much as you want to come into a house and look at it like it's a show home and nobody's ever lived here and I can picture all of my stuff. Yeah. I also want to see how people live. So I'm not the person who can necessarily see past everything. Right. So paint colors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, yeah. you know, I remember going into one house that we bought and they had this really big chair and I was like, oh, I want to share like that because I love the way that the room looks. Right. So when it's lived in, to me, you can also picture how you will yeah. live in it. Yeah. It's like, like we took the TV out of the family room. Well, that's just silly for me. For me, that's silly. I'm okay with it. Cause maybe people actually don't watch TV. I do. <laughs> maybe they don't. So it's fine. It's there's in other rooms, but like I would just personally, I would leave it incorporate it because I like people who don't have a vision can say, Oh, that's where I can put the TV. Right. Yes. Like so, someone uh, like me who I, again, I don't have that skill yeah. in my brain. I would want to see how you have things laid out. Like I would never want to look at an empty house. Right. Cause then I'd be like, but I need ideas. I need to see how somebody else. Yeah, no, I, no, no, I like empty houses better. Right. Right. Like, so you can walk see. in and go like I, when I walk in, I just kind of blank everything out and go, okay, get rid of all this. This is what I would do. So, yeah. um, you know, but it's been interesting because, you know, you've had to make sure everything's working and it's hard to have all your appliances working in COVID, right? Because you're waiting for parts and you guys know, I've told you all my customer service horror stories. So, you know, I got everything working and I've had a problem with the dishwasher for ever, uh, for a long time. And, um, you know, the tray falls, it's a Bosch. I know you guys love customer service stories and the tray fell and it was, um, and it, and so you, you have to pick it up and it's very hard and it broke the door arm swing because of it. And I didn't know what to do. Finally, I tried, said, okay, I looked on the boards and some girl said Bosch sent them extra large wheels and it fixed the problem because there's a problem with the design. 
right? Oh, uh, okay. So okay. I sat on Bosch customer service telephone for three hours. I left it there beside me. No one picked up. Three hours on hold. Wow. And so I emailed them and I got a form letter and said, so I'm going to be back to you seven days, nothing. And then I went on their Facebook and I posted about my bad experience along with a million other people. And then the, whoever controls their social media said, please uh, send us a private message. So I did. And you know what they sent back? Contact customer service. <laughs> Not helpful. <laughs> so I, I hate to say this because now all you guys are going to run to him. But uh, so what I did was I was like, to hell with this. You know, guys, I always go to the CEO or the president because I get fed up with people. So I um, looked the CEO up on LinkedIn and it was like a Thursday night or something at eight o'clock at night. And I sent him a note and I said, look, I can't, can you just get somebody to call me basically? Cause nobody there. And he's replied in 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, he replied and said, I'm sorry that you had such an unbosh experience. And the next day customer service from the U S called me. Not only did they call me three times, they set up a service call. Wow. To come in. They're coming in on Wednesday and they said they're going to replace the wheels. The, the arm swing was a recall as well and everything's going to be fixed. So sometimes, you know, even though it's frustrating and you go through all this, what you realize is, you know, instead of buying a new one, everything was would have been replaced. So right. I would have been out a lot of money, about a thousand dollars. Right. And now they're coming. So moral of the story is if you can't get anywhere, go to the top. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up. Because unfortunately, that's what ends up happening is you get very frustrated, right? So yeah. you end up just going, forget it. I don't want to deal with this company anymore. I'm just going to go buy a new one because yeah. that's the easier solution. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it, it's been I know I've told you guys a lot of customer service stories in the last year. But I think it's really important that you understand that there are ways to solve these things. And there are people that are actually helpful and nice, right? Yes. But you just have to find them and you have to keep at it. And it is a pain because it would have been a lot easier to just pick up the phone and get a new one. But I didn't want to spend a thousand dollars on a dishwasher that I know I'm moving. Right. But it needs well, to be and the fact that it works. Yeah. Like it still works. You just need it. Like, works. It, it still it's works. a pain in the butt. It's really hard to, to do, but it works. So, right. um, you know, and so when you're selling a house, the problem these days is because all the parts are not coming in, you know, you have, and you have to leave things in good working order. What do you do? Right. Right. So exactly. you have to basically tell them, look, you know, like if they moved in today, they have to wait for the service call. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. Keep and cheerful. Mm. Fix it. It's not hard. Yeah. So, so you're in the home stretch, which is great for people who are following us along. It's been uh, it's been crazy for you this summer. Uh, a lot of moving, yeah. a lot of organizing, a lot of moving. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, speaking of moving, just so you guys know, we were supposed to do our um, um, Get Visible conference um, next, this weekend. Right? Yeah, it was going to be, yeah, it was going to be starting on Friday. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to just say, even though there's tons of interest and we're set, we sold a lot of tickets, um, I just, you know, number one, the studio wasn't ready. Yes. So, um, and, and we thought it'd be ready back in first of August, it wasn't ready. It's not gonna be ready for another month. And um, given all this stuff, I was I said to Stacy, I don't know if I can talk for three days, because I'm, right. I'm exhausted, I'm doing all this stuff. So we made a decision, we said, you know what, what's in the best interest of our um, customers of our clients, what's in their best interest, um, for us to keep pushing through and doing a mediocre job, or to do what we really wanted to do. So um, we decided to postpone it till January. Because we got to postpone it, we're making it bigger and better even, right? So, Well, what was really interesting for me was the reaction. Right. So, because sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, but like I'd already planned or whatever. Yeah. Every single person. So the bulk email that went out to the attendees of people who bought tickets. And then I sent individual emails to the speakers. Right. Obviously letting them know that, you know, could you save the date for January? And did you still want to participate in January? Yeah. Each speaker that wrote back was like, oh, my God, that sounds fantastic. Actually, that works out so much better for me. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to January. I've already blocked in my calendar, like super positive yeah. responses, even from people that we don't really know very well. Yeah. So I guess it was in the cards. Yeah, it was. It, sometimes it works out. Things work out for the best. We were just talking about that on another thing before we yeah. got on live um, that you don't even see. Right. 
And so I know I'm going to be for sure way more relaxed. We're going to be in our new studio. Yep. Everything will be ready to go. We're not going to be scrambling. Um, and so for me, uh, it'll be a much, much better um, event because um, we're so looking forward to it without any, you know, challenges in the back end. Yeah. And you're right. It's not, it's not fair. And I think, you know, postponing something is better than you're right. Delivering a subpar right. quote, product or experience. Yeah. yeah. Right. And there is, we put a lot of time, a lot of effort into the planning. We want to deliver the best content and the best experience. And sometimes it doesn't happen exactly on the date that you want. And that's okay. Yeah. So we postponed it. And like I said, I'm just, you know, every speaker is like, Oh, actually that works out so much better. Yeah. For me. Like I have, I don't know what it, it was. A, it, anyway, it was in the cards. Yeah, it was. Well, you know, it's, it's tough. September, ever, people went back to school and back to work, some people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and but we're still in limbo, at least here in uh, in Canada and Ontario. We still hear rumors of schools shutting down again and stuff. So, you know, I think people are kind of like, well, what am I doing exactly? I'm not going to work. I'm going to work. And yeah. now their ha uh, vaccine passports are coming in. And so you must be you must have your your double shots in order to, or single, if you have that um, vaccine, in order to go to restaurants, sporting events, you name it, concerts, um, pretty much, pretty much everything, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And I said, yeah, I was just watching sort of the, the rules and stuff like that. And, you know, what's coming out and stuff. But it was interesting was the emphasis on so this is where I find human nature and, and the public, it, sometimes some of the stuff is really disappointing like right. the police are getting ready yeah the 911 operators are getting ready because they know that people are going to push back and they're getting ready so it's like if there's a problem if somebody's you know angry at you because yeah. they're asking for that then the police are going to be ready and the 911 operators are prepared to take those calls and I'm like oh my goodness we're we're creating an infrastructure yeah. around assuming that people are going to react badly yeah. And there will be people that act badly. Absolutely. But but can I just give a shout out to everyone that's listening today? The the person that owns the restaurant or the waitress or whoever, it, this is not her. She's not asking you personally for your passport. It's government enforced. So stop yelling at these people that are on the front line of restaurants and movies and everything else. Yeah. It's not their fault. If you want to go yell and don't like it, go to the government, do a protest, do something, but leave people who are trying to do their jobs alone. Okay. They don't, they don't have a choice in the matter and shame on you. If you're yelling and screaming at a hostess at a restaurant, cause we've heard about it. Right. Well, that's the thing that, um, that somebody was talking about was the fact that a lot of uh, frontline staff. So a lot of the waiter, the waiters, the waitresses, yeah. the hostesses are new. Yeah. Right. Because they're rehiring and, and because their old staff sometimes have found new positions and depending on what had gone on, they needed to make money. Totally respect that. Okay. They need to hire new. And they said, so here's this new waitress starting a job, trying to figure everything out, learning the ropes. And now they have to say, can you prove that you're vaccinated? And that's right. who they're worried about. They're not necessarily yeah. worried about the business owner because they're like, not my fault. It's the government. Yeah. But the waitress is the person who's originally yeah. dealing with that. So and they, the, they and, felt very bad for that person. And here's the problem. And this is the one that I'm really worried about because I work obviously with a, a restaurant chain. And here's the problem. You walk into the restaurant chain. Um, there's no hostess. You just sit because it's a quick serve restaurant. It's a breakfast place, right? So you, it says, please, please be seated. Big sign. And you sit. So you go sit at a table and now the waitress comes over and says, can I see your stuff? And they say, and they don't have it. How do you kick them out they, if they won't leave their seats? Right. That's when you have to call the police. And and unfortunately, I am praying that most people are okay. But unfortunately, there will be people like that. Yeah. And that's and that's the unfortunate part, right? That's again, you know, protesters all for it, but protest in the right spot. Yeah. Go to the government who's making these rules. Don't yeah. you know protest to the restaurants, the small business owners, people who are enforcing the rules, because the other piece is that. They also have community officers who are going to look at the businesses to ensure that they're enforcing it. Right. So right. interesting. Very crazy. So what's right. going on with you? I haven't seen you in like a couple of days. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, you know what? Um, interesting. Just plugging along. So our podcast did launch again today yeah. um, on season three, which is really cool. So yeah. one of the things that you don't realize sometimes. So my first instinct yesterday was, you know, starting season three, we need to create a new intro and outro. So right. that's sort of where my brain goes, because I like to mix it up and we have different stuff going on. And, you know, maybe your outro from last season wasn't so like my first instinct, literally texted Faye was like, yeah. can you jump on Need five minutes? You know, let's figure out what we're going to say, blah, blah, blah. I'll put it all together because that's what I like to do. And but I, was then I realized that. that and, and I always do that. We always think forward. Yeah. We always think over the new, right? I need to put this out on social media. I need a new image. I need a new image. I need a new image. I need a new intro. I need a new this. I need a new that. However, <laughs> for anybody that's been doing business for a long time, I bet you have stuff in the archives. Yes. <laughs> I bet there's an image over, out there that you used maybe four years ago that's absolutely perfect for what you need today and you don't need to create that new. So my second thought after uh -oh. I texted her <laughs> was to go back and look and see what we had done before. And we had mm -hmm. a fantastic intro and outro that actually wasn't used because sometimes you take different takes and it's like, okay, I really like this one, but I, you know, right. mix it with different music. Boom. It's a whole new thing. So we didn't have to get online and it's the same thing. It was really funny. So next week we're starting our networking. So we're doing a weekly networking event Tuesdays at 10 and I needed an image. So I immediately go to Canva <laughs> and I'm like, and again, keeping in mind someone like myself, I love templates. Same reason why when I move into yeah. a house, I need it to be furnished. I need a template. Yeah. I, people who start with blank on a Canva thing or a, a house like you <laughs> can't do it. Not, not in my brain space. So anyway, we're starting networking events next week with Mastermind City. First thought, I need a new image. And I'm like, I'm looking and I'm like, wait a minute. We did this before. Back yeah. up into my archives and boom, there's an image that's perfect. And somebody goes, wow, that's a really great image. Because people don't remember, no. they can't, you're, no. you're, you, you do not, people don't have the mental capacity to remember something that you posted six months ago. No, it doesn't work like that. So look back, what have you used before and see if you can use it for something that's new. And uh, you, you've seen, and I guess, and we've had this conversation a lot too around like, you're invested in your images more than other people are. You're invested sure. in the color of your brand more than other people are. And you think, oh my goodness, I've used that. I can't use it again. Yes, you can. Yeah, nobody, nobody sees it. I don't even, sometimes, um, you know, you guys know we have somebody that posts, Spencer posts for us for social media. And um, sometimes she posts things and I don't, you know, I don't rem even remember getting that picture taken or whatever, but it had posted like a year prior, right? Yeah. But you don't even remember any of it. So if I don't even remember it, nobody <laughs> else is going to remember it. I did the same thing. I'm like, where did that picture come from? Yeah, right? did, did we take that? I guess. I don't remember it. But again, depending what you do with it. So you can always take what you have and repurpose or just change it up a little bit. But you don't always, like, I guess that's the part. Like Everyone always feels like they have to, I have to do new. I have to do new. I have right. to do fresh. I have to do this. But if you're consistent with your branding all along, you absolutely can go back, pull right. an image that you used a couple of years ago, or pull an image even that you used six months ago, re whatever, like change it slightly. And maybe, you know, the text that you put with it is different, but the image right. still stands. So you don't always have to do new and take that time because right. that would have, like that five minutes that I asked you for would have turned into okay, let's have a quick conversation. How are yeah. things going? You would have stopped what you're doing. We all know when you interrupt the flow of what you're doing, yeah. you also takes you so much time to get back on track. And I'll tell you, I was painting the front door yesterday <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I could feel my, I, could, I saw a text like on the phone from you and I was like, ah, oh, shit, she wants to do it now. <laughs> I got over to paint, half the door's done. And then it was you saying, oh, no, never mind. I think we're good. And I was like, yes. So I didn't have to do anything. It wasn't the five minutes. It was dropping everything and doing it, which was, um, you know, because if anyone has ever done things like manual stuff, painting and that, 
you have to keep going because once you stop, you don't want to start again, right? That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. You get into the flow. Like you said, that five minutes would have turned into probably an hour. Because and, an, yeah, and an excuse not to go back and paint the rest. Because I, right. really, I really didn't want to do it, but I knew it had to be done. Yeah. And so, it's, the, it's the interruption and you have yeah. to go wash your hands and you have to do this and you have like, you didn't have to look um, good, but you couldn't touch your computer with painted hands. It was just, yeah. No. So the, the other funny part was because <laughs> I had texted her, I ended up getting a pocket dial. Yeah. Or a pocket text audio message. Yes. I've also been pocket dialed. Yes. So I don't know if there's anyone, I don't know how you feel, but I, people have pocket dialed me. Me and I get excited. Yeah, because you want to hear something cool. <laughs> I I, it's like I answer and I wait. Like, talk about me. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm waiting because my husband has pocket dialed me. My son has pocket yeah. dialed me. And this is like, I love it because I'm like, they don't know I'm on the phone. Yeah. So I wait. I don't know if anyone else does that. Maybe they think it's I creepy. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I have yet, like, the most boring conversations. My husband pocket dials me. Nothing. Mine was the most boring yesterday. Yours was probably um, the most. Yeah, I get the audio message. And I'm like, literally, it's a six minute audio message. <laughs> I didn't listen for six minutes because I listened for 30 seconds. And this is what I heard. Because <laughs> I was painting and she was hearing my 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 pants, my, my um, scrubs <laughs> rub up against my phone. That was it. She might have heard a paintbrush. <laughs> There's nobody Boring. to talk to. <laughs> like my son has pocket dialed me and I'm listening and he, like, he, all I hear is walking and I'm like, can't you talk to somebody? <laughs> it's interesting. Exactly. exactly. It's funny though, right? Because, and then you get nervous because when you realize you sent it, but I did not worry about it because all I was doing was painting. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, I shall just listen to 10 seconds and delete because there's nothing <laughs> on it but yeah and then you go oh, what did i say right and then some people don't know sometimes though right because i sent a, a audio text but most people are just they don't know that they're like they're it's a live call right mine was different it yeah was it was like, not, yeah exactly but like people they don't even know they did it mm -hmm. <laughs> no it's true because like sometimes on the phone, I'm like waiting and waiting. And then it's like two minutes. And I'm like, all right, this is really boring. Yeah. And then I go, oh, by the way, I listened to you walk for two minutes. And they're yeah. like, what? Because when you hang up, their yeah. phone goes back to the home screen. Well, that's the, the problem. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you like a regular phone, right? That's the problem. Remember the cool thing about flip phones is that couldn't happen. You didn't pop right. Phone, right. And now they've come out, right? Did you see? I think it was Samsung or something came up. Samsung. Yeah, they have a flip. Yeah. Yeah. That can stay up or you can flip it down. So it was kind of interesting. Um, unfortunately, I'm still going to always be an Apple girl, but the, the, is there a way to prevent it? Well, no, because I never lock, like, even if you lock, it still doesn't work. Like it's, you can still dial people, you know what I mean? Right. Unless exactly. you actually shut it down. So the Apple phone 13, right? 13 came out. They oh. announced it yesterday. Oh, I missed that. How did I miss that? Um, it was um, Tuesday. Yeah, they announced it. it wasn't big, big news. They just said it was a, a crisper. Um, it was a better battery life, a crisper picture or something, a few things. Not a lot of difference. A couple new colors. Yeah, a little bit boring. Nothing too exciting. <laughs> but um, but then I was like, oh, well, maybe that's why I never ended up getting my phone. I guess it's I'm waiting to move to the new place. And then I can get my Apple 13 now. But I was kind of like, it was interesting. Like it's a 13. And you know, most people skip numbers 13 which is really weird that people skip the number 13 but yeah so i was like okay maybe that's my lucky number <laughs> i'm actually surprised because they skipped nine so i was kind yeah. of expecting them to skip 13 and go right to 14 yeah weird right but i kind of like 13 i do too it seems like and there's a, some blue phone that i want to see too oh actually you know what now that you're saying that i did see somebody talk about the different colors of phone right they're really excited about the blue blue and pink right of the color so maybe that's what she was talking about i didn't it was just on tiktok so i was just kind of cool, scrolling right? this is the international symbol for scrolling apparently. that's right yeah. <laughs> that's where, <laughs> yeah yeah so i did see that yesterday so yeah i didn't realize that that was the new phone i just wasn't really yeah. wasn't really paying attention yeah so we'll have to check that out and let you guys know and we have a couple of really exciting things coming up in in uh, mastermind city so um 
keep um, listening and watching because there's a brand, a bunch of brand new things launching in a week or two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll keep that, uh, keep that under wraps for now, but you yeah. need to go back uh, because you are final touches of getting yeah. your host listed. So last you... day, yay, last day. And then, um, you know, well, ironically last day for you to do that. And then we also have the last day of our GIA students today. Oh, that's right. So we end, uh, uh, which is really exciting because it's graduation day. They've gone through the whole, uh, kind of sad a little bit. This was a great group. It was, but, um, we are starting a brand new group in October. Yeah. So October. Let me look at the date quickly. October 18th. So you can go to join Gia, I think. Join Gia.com. Uh, for those of you who are outside of Canada, we did maneuver it around the Canadian Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. We're Canadians. So that's why we're starting a little bit uh, later than we in, uh, in the fall. Yeah. So October, um, it'll be great. There's, uh, you know, brand new students, a great opportunity for you guys to um, to start in eight weeks. You know, as we've told you many times, launch videos, launch podcasts, get your message going, um, everything you need to really finally commit to getting your business online. So don't uh, miss that opportunity to join us. And then right after essentially that session, you'll be moving right into the conference. Which is per that. So we've, that timing is working out really well. Uh, I'm excited because yeah. I've seen, so there's a couple of students I just sort of paid attention to yesterday because they were showing up in my feed and it's been really cool to see them so disjointed and their signature message so all over the map and yeah. to see them finally kind of hone that in and go and feel proud and good right. and going like, this is who I am and, and showcasing that. And it's like, okay, awesome. like it's, it's just fun. It's fun to see. So yes, yeah. graduation day today, but they're yeah. still part of our group. So yeah. anybody uh, that's joined in the past can absolutely join on future ones as well. So yeah, it's been really good to see some of the past students join this study lounge as well and um, not necessarily go through it, but to offer sort of their guidance as well. So it's been, yeah. a, it's been a fun, it's been a fun session. Yeah, for sure. So you don't want to miss it guys. Give it a shot. Just take a look, see if it's right for you. And um, we'd be happy for you to join. Absolutely. All right. Well, you have yourself a good week and good luck with the sale of your house. And we'll find out next week how it all went. Thanks for joining us in the city. If you're ready to make a lasting impression on a global scale, you can learn more at joingia.com. That's J-O-I-N-G-I-A.com. So go there now because the world is waiting for you.